Okay, we are at the end of our meeting. The thing between us and adjournment is the open microphone. Um, so we have an open microphone session. We will take any questions that people haven't had a chance to ask. Uh, please approach the mics. Yes, Senator Middle. Um, hello, Terry Hope from Sierra Tell. Um, this is my first time attending this meeting and I'd like to thank you for inviting me as an Aaron Fellow. Um, I'd also like to thank Tina Morris for her excellent mentorship and the community for making me feel welcome. Um, the topics have been broad in scope and it's been very enlightening and I hope to continue to participate in the future. I'd also like you to urge, uh, urge you to encourage people within your organizations to apply for the Aaron Fellowship if they can't otherwise attend this meeting. Thank you. Center rear. Rudiger Volk, Deutsche Telekom. Uh, well, uh, I would like to refer to something that did come up in the NANOC technical presentations. Wes George from Time Warner Cable uh, did a very nice presentation explaining what various uh, problems uh, are facing someone who wants to seriously use RPKI. Um, there are, and I agree very much, there are quite a number of interesting problems that need to be attacked. Uh, however, one of the major locking stones in the way that he recognized and pointed out, in particular on slide 21 of his, uh, of his presentation, was the legal framework that is put around RPKI by Aaron. And looking from the outside, from where I'm coming, uh, yes, Aaron looks less friendly for accessing the users, the members, the Aaron resource holders data than the other RIRs. Um, well, okay, just take that report. I think for you in the region, it probably is much more important to note that serious companies, legal departments, come back and say, no way to sign those agreements. Um, and as, as I gathered at the same meeting, well, okay, there are federal networks that say, well, okay, no way to do this. Um, let me try let me try to give you a, a suggestion uh, for taking another look and prob maybe coming up with a more appropriate framework uh, that actually fits the design uh, of RPKI better and maybe at the, at the same time you also look at the question of well okay how are you how are you presenting the interface to the system are you making it friendly to potential users or are you uh, giving uh, a surface that looks uh, like well okay um, uh, it is well, okay, kind of threatening. Understood. Rudiger, um, so let me respond, if you, if you will. Um, I was at the same presentation, and I hear your suggestion, uh, and I commit that I will bring to the Aaron board the information from that presentation, as well as some thoughts on a fresh look at what we're doing. Uh, I don't know what will come out of that, because there's an important balancing that goes on, but I do commit to have the board have a fresh look. Maybe Aaron will get sneakier in where we hide the information like some of the other RIRs. Uh, John, may I, may I contribute a little bit of specific point of view that sure. I think the current approach is kind of missing. Uh, the RPKI design assumes that the CAs actually put all the information, all the certificates on behalf of the users, the resource holders, or Aaron's members to, into the public by the repository system, which is not really very much different from 
uh, a web PKICA telling their users, yes, your stuff will validate because we bribe the browser vendor yep. to put the root certificate there. Um, the RPA, as you have it right now, quite clearly declares your trust, uh, trust uh, anchor as a protected secret, which is very much the opposite of how the other PKIs work. And, uh, well, okay, quite obviously, quite obviously is a barrier to the public access of your user's data or your client's data. Um, I'm not completely sure what can and should be done on the RPA side, but I think uh, it is very important to put much more emphasis on the side of the relation between the CA and the resource holders and understand that the resource holders, when they sign up with a CA, actually are expecting certain service. Parts of Wes's presentation, I think, were asking for uh, additional things uh, aside from the uh, RPA fix. Um, in short, what is the major purpose of signing up as a, C, uh, as a client under an RPKI CA is I want to have a reliable service in publishing my certificates and making them due to the RPKI architecture actually publicly and easily available. Um, I have very much the feeling that working on that contractual relation and figuring out what it means and what implications it has, uh, has been probably missed uh, and overrun, overrun by uh, the considerations to protect Erin as an organization, which of course is an important concern and is very well appreciated. Okay. Got it? Yes. You want to respond? Bill? Yeah. Um, we've got a fast moving train wreck here. And it sounds like what you're proposing is that we can make things better by taking the liability disclaimers off the tickets so that more people will get on the train. Um, I, I'm not sure how this makes things better. Uh, well, uh, of course, of course, of course, we can decide. We can de uh, we can decide that uh, route improving routing security. Uh, doesn't really matter, and I have to say, having worked on and looking at routing security for quite a while, I do not see any serious contender in, in town. And looking at the slow pace of development of such things, uh, I do not see I do not see anything uh, that uh, really that really would uh, uh, be a reasonable alternate choice at this time and for the next three years. Okay. Rudiger, as I indicated, um, I will bring the Wes's presentation to the Aaron board uh, and uh, along with some thoughts. Aaron's not trying to protect its trust anchor locator as a secret trade secret. That's a artifact of trying to make sure that the people who are using things in the CA actually have seen the relying party agreement. Other RIRs put a statement in their CA that say, if you use the CA, you're bound, by our rely by, you're bound to indemn indemnify us. That's uh, uh, an informal binding, and Aaron went with a more formal one. But I will bring the, um, I will bring it before the board along with some additional legal work. We'll try to make those materials that the board used to be briefed available to you folks so you can see it. I, I, rec I want to recognize, just to highlight, that it's not a question. Nearly uh, three of the four, four of the five RIRs have indemnification statements. We just wanted to make sure you actually saw it before you started using RPKI. Okay, um, center front. Uh, Rob Seastrom, Time Warner Cable, Aaron Advisory Council. 
I'm going to make two comments here, one of which is uh, vetted with and speaking on behalf of my VP who is out of the room on a conference call right now. And the sentiment here is um, have your people talk to our people. Uh, a consultation group that got together the attorneys from Aaron and attorneys from the large companies that are saying no, 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 no. Other RIRs that are saying no, 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 no. Um, and other interested parties to hammer out an agreement that we can all live with to a certain degree would be a step forward. Now, that, that's the end of that statement. My, and I will my, bring that as an option to the board. I do not know where that will go. Thank you. I, I, we, would, we would like you to bring that as an option to the board. That's all I can ask. Uh, my response to Bill is uh, it may be, in, in fact, a train wreck. But the, um, given that my group of the uh, Consumer Reports and uh, National Safety Council, you know, car testing people for our company, there is no point in us uh, making that evaluation for the organization if legal is just going to say, well, you can't run it anyway. So we are not allowed to spend time on, on going too far down that road to figure that out for ourselves if legal says no. Okay. Thank you. Um, center, middle, Mike. Owen DeLong, <coughs> excuse me, Owen DeLong, um, speaking primarily for myself. Um, I have been approached by a number of members of the community uh, during this meeting and in email exchanges, and there is a perception problem brewing, and I don't know whether it's merely a perception problem or an actual problem, but the perception is that V4 allocations and assignments are getting harder and harder and harder and more stringently reviewed, and V4 transfers are being permitted on a less stringent basis. I believe that the community was clear in linking the policies in Section 8 to Section 4 and that they wanted the same level of review and uh, stringency applied to transfer requests as to free pool requests. And if this is merely a perception problem, then I would like to suggest that Aaron needs to do something to address the perception. Because for any given individual outside the organization, perception is indistinguishable from reality. Right. Okay, Owen, it's a real problem. Real problem. Uh, the, when team review went in place, the way it was being done and what was being handled uh, was not as efficient as it could be. Uh, as Leslie said, we took some corrective actions by moving certain cues off to the side, by changing the uh, way the team review is structured so that that's now down to from five days for our turnaround on a response. Yeah, I'm not to, talking about turnaround times. Uh, um, when you talk about delays, that's where it would occur. I didn't talk about delays. Okay, well, I'm sorry, what are you talking I talked about rigor and stringency of, you know, um, oh. When I submit a request, how much additional documentation am I asked for? How much proof do I have to provide, et cetera, et cetera? It, that's a that perception is, issue. I okay. promise you. Then, then the perception issue needs to get addressed somehow. Understood. Thank you. Well, we're on the on the real on the problem you didn't ask about. We're down to three, and we're working to get it back within two. Okay. Um, center rear mic. Oh, yes. I'm sorry. I I thought that was a comma. Sandra Murphy Parsons. I uh, want to uh, repeat myself uh, from the comment that I made after West Georgia's presentation at Nanog. The, I'm not a legal person. I don't speak legal speak. The difficulty that I have in the RPA is the prohibition against sharing the information which presents certain, uh, which prevents certain architectures that we had thought would be valuable in the distribution of RPKI information. You can't get it from your neighbor. You can't get it from your IXP. You can't get it from your service provider. You must get it from Aaron. Um, and I think that presents some networking and architecture and difficulties. I think it puts Aaron in a position of having to make sure that their service is even more reliable. There'll be a single point of contact. Um, so, so, Sandra, there's yes. absolutely no intent of precluding any architecture that someone wants to use. 
We did have this problem at one point with reporting, for example. People want to do monitoring and availability reporting and statistical issues, and we actually have worked that. We actually have an agreement that specifically allows that. If you have a technical architecture for people who want to do um, route um, integrity and republication, and that's part of an architecture being considered, and people are going to need to get past that trust anchor issue, mm -hmm. then we should definitely talk because we're not trying to inhibit any architecture that the CIDA group wants to come up with. Okay. Note, note, the party that's in there doing that publication service may not like the fact that they can republish, but they are still going to have to agree to something, but we can figure out an agreement that gives them that right. I see. Okay? Thank you. Okay. Um, center, middle. Adam Thompson, again. The, t concerning our PKI, the, the obstacles that others have covered don't prevent me from participating. Uh, I just did sign my ROAs, but I am baffled. If I open a TCP connection and my packet doesn't make it all the way to the end host, I don't sue Aaron. If I look up a who is entry and the data is wrong, I don't sue Aaron. Why is the RPKI data so different at such a fundamental level? Recognize that you don't sue Aaron in those circumstances, but if the bank you're serving ends up suffering because your use of RPKI, I'm not even worried about our service at all. I'm, I'm quite fine with that. I'm worried about your use of RPKI causes someone else to suffer. Then they may turn around and sue everyone involved in the activity. And so it is not per se the party that is directly our customer. That's generally not a concern. It's the other party that might be the relying party on what you publish that we are ultimately worried about. Bill's small ISP with a bank that somehow gets impacted because he didn't understand how to correctly handle the fact that, well, maybe he couldn't refresh and validate a certificate. Okay? And so it is to be clear, we're setting up a system here, and what we're trying to say is, as people make use of this system, we want it to be clear that people are taking the right precautions. You want us to. We want everyone using this system to also take precautions, to realize that there are some failure modes that could result in people having to understand that they're not going to get the validation that they want inherent in the system right now. They were actually the five preceding pages in Wes's presentation about some of the failure modes. So it is really about third parties who are impacted because we're all making use of our PKI. But may I continue for one moment? Um, but this problem already exists in many other domains that aren't covered. Good, then just click <laughs> yes. D like DNS, BGP Excellent. routing, like I can sync, well, I can attempt to sync 100% of VeriSign's traffic in about 10 minutes from now. Um, and we have mechanisms that handle that. People start ignoring my AS advertisements. Sure. The fundamental difference between the examples you cite and RPKI is that the purpose of RPKI is to carry a cryptographic assertion, a signature, that Aaron stands behind the veracity of the statement. Right. right? So that is a legal hook into Aaron's legal defense fund and reserves. That's all it is. There is no other purpose of RPKI other than to give you a legal hook into someone with deep pockets if they make a misrepresentation. Let me, let me say something. As I pointed out to Wes uh, in his own presentation, when you contract for service, it is not uncommon to find an indemnification clause. His own services offered by TWC have the same third-party indemnification clause. Mm -hmm. As we grow and professionalize the internet, it may be that we don't have agreements, but as we add them, you're going to see these happen for services. This is a new service, so we're actually putting the agreements in place that we probably should have for others. Okay. I think yes, it's worthwhile, problem. but uh, I think we're exceeding, our reach is exceeding our grasp with our BKI at this okay. time, legally. Okay, Senator Front. But you don't ask to indemnify, like the user doesn't have to indemnify VeriSign for providing a certificate for Bank of America. 
And that's more like the situation you're getting into where you're saying like, you know, some ISP's downstream customer needs to sign your agreement in order to use the system. And you don't have that in other, you don't have that in other areas. Right. So As I said, other, other RIRs have taken other approaches. Not RIRs. I mean in other, so like. No, no. I, I understand not RIRs. So I'm saying other RIRs have bodies. taken other approaches of doing that same requirement that we've done for our PKI and getting that same agreement with that customer by simply embedding it in their CA and saying use of the CA binds you in that manner. Sure. Just it's the same that. agreement, it's just they didn't click to acknowledge. Okay. Okay? I actually came up here for other stuff. Okay, so, so hold, let's keep, do you have RPKI, Rudiga? Yeah, just short comment for Bill. Uh, I hear you saying the only thing to do routing security is to create situations to, uh, to litigate. I'm really of a very different opinion. I'm not saying that at all, Rudiga. I'm not, I'm saying Bill, if we offer a service. Bill, Bill was, Bill was failing, speaking this you're way. You're failing to distinguish between security and RPKI. RPKI is a method of attaching digital signatures. Okay. And it is the way for getting reliable information for doing your routing uh, decisions, which okay. is the part where the security comes in. Okay, so people on RPKI, I got, Jeff at the back, Mike, anyone else? Okay, so in order, at the back, Mike. Go ahead, Kevin. Kevin Bloomberg, The Wire, NAC. It sounds like uh, this is a great time to do a very open public discussion on RPKI. This has been an issue from a financial point of view in draining resources from Aaron. This has been an issue in implementation. This has been an issue, 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 issue. And uh, it sounds like let's get the cat out of the bag and have a real discussion on this. Um, get, it sounds like from my perspective, the community needs it at some point and is saying there are roadblocks. I don't know what they are. We're not gonna have enough time at the mic to do it. So let's actually have something substantive. So Kevin, let me respond to that because I, I actually have to take exception. This actually is the time, unfortunately, or on the list, yes, but ultimately, this is a risk trade-off, and it is not the community's call. It's the board's call. Now, I'll make sure that the community gets some materials to see how that trade-off is made, but even some of that ultimately is a fiduciary duty. So I recommend you find a trustee and grab them and start having that conversation, because that's who I have to have it with. So, John, okay? just to say one thing. None of us in the room are lawyers. Some of us are smart enough to know we're not lawyers. Um, maybe even having a, um, what's the word, an overview that explains why we're doing it the way we're doing right. it would be appropriate. And that's what I was committing to, is saying, I think we gotta take a fresh look and we'll try to get the briefing materials in front of the community as much as we can in front of the board. Thank you. Okay, Jeff? Jeff Houston, AP Nick. Um, I've had a long experience inside this and I would actually like to say firstly that there is a distinction between the resource public key infrastructure and its use in routing. Yes. What we originally thought about, and it's about 15 years ago inside APNIC, was we wished to take who is a bunch of ASCII and try and put something around it that said, if they're my resources, I have something, a private key, that can help me make attestations about those resources that just doesn't rely on some text in a database that really doesn't nail it down. And this seemed like a good thing. I think it still is a good thing. In and of any other application, it's a good thing because it makes the registry work better. Right. And in that registry context, the issues around general use are very different. Because typically you don't look at all the registry all of the time, you look at that entry once. And so the consequences of any form of failure are limited to that inquiry once. And then some bright people, who at the time were having the same thought in other rooms, thought, you know, we need to secure routing. And then this RPKI comes along, it goes, you know, it could be really, really useful. The problem with routing is that all the routes are with you all of the time. So it's no longer a, I want to open this door. Every single door needs to be opened at once. Correct. The consequences of failure in that interlocking key infrastructure in routing 
can verge on catastrophic because it's everybody all at once. And so operators very high in that trust hierarchy are vulnerable. And all of us at the RIR level have looked at this going, this is uncomfortable because the consequences of failure, and I don't think it's a UPS thing, but you know, failure does happen, could be catastrophic on routing, and that makes us all feel extremely worried. So yes, there are disclaimers. Yes, there are things going, look, you know, this is really, really hard. At the same time, it's certainly from APNIC, and I know from the other RIRs, we're trying to go back to the standards folks saying, can we make this a little bit less fragile? Can we alleviate some of these concerns? So when you say I'm uncomfortable, when Wes George says, you know, look, we're not going to do it now, it'd be nice to say it's Aaron's fault because that seems, you know, the meme du jour, but it's not. It's not Aaron's fault and it's not the way you've actually done explicit permissions in using your, your, your TA material. That's not the root cause of the problem. This is a hard problem and after 20 years of studying it, it's still a hard problem and we don't have easy answers. What we've done so far is a prototype, as far as I can feel. There is more work to happen in developing the technology. It's not finished. Give us a bit of breathing space, please, and allow us to look at this and see how we can make it really work. Because, like it or not, we're going to be stuck with BGP for a long time. And if it's the state of the current security, we're all toast. We need to make it better. But, you know, it needs a bit of cooperation, not just head bashing. Thanks. Thank you, Jeff. Okay. Center front. I'll resist to urge to keep going on about our PKI. Um, so at one point you said like grab your friendly board member and the question that I had um, is about board transparency sure. and a couple of different parts of that. So um, and also the ACSP. So there are several items in the ACSP that um, have been open for a long time, some of which have been open since 2008. I get up and say this every meeting. Mm -hmm. um, so not all of them are, some of, many of them are IT related things that I know that you're working on. Not all of them are. Um, some of them include things like term limits, candidate speeches, and ge geographic diversity of candidates running for the AC and the board. Um, the comments on all of those, and they're in various states of open and closed, but comments on all of those were that they were being referred to the, um, the governance committee on the board of trustees. And so we, I would like to encourage either now or at a future meeting um, feedback from the governance committee about those items. So there was three items that I think you said, term limits, changes to candidate speeches and board diversity. In geographic, geographic diversity, diversity, diversity of candidates. No. Of, not actually, not of candidates because I know that there's been some work on that in NOMCOM, but actually geographic diversity of seats. Um, of seats. The comp yeah, looking more at the actual selection process of how do you seat the bodies, the, well, no, the, the whether, the whether selection you elect the, whether you elect them, nominate them, appoint them. No. So my, I put a suggestion into the ACSP that would require there to be, to, that would mandate that there be geographic diversity of candidates on both, not candidates, of seats on the board and the AC. You must have one from each region. Right. Okay. Composition then. Yes. Okay. And so um, that so, was that was so kind of a grape that was like immediately closed and not and said that it was referred to the governance committee. Some other items like term limits and candidate speeches are still open, all under the umbrella of um, governance. Okay. Well, let me let me deal with those, the specifics and then John might have more general. In terms of composition, uh, there was I believe a error and that wasn't actually properly referred. So our apologies, but. Strangely, it was already is something that is kind of on our radar and we have been kind of looking at both the AC and the board on what the composition should look like for those and with an eye to how can we make sure that we ensure that there's geographic diversity or that at least all three of our serving regions, you know, because we identify Canada as one region, US, mm -hmm. and then the Caribbean are served. I don't uh, have an answer for you there, but I did get some good feedback from uh, yourself earlier and uh, some other members of the community, so we are trying to do that, but if you have ideas on how that might look, I am happy to hear them and pass them to the committee. On the, sure, if on that one. So one of the things that we've been trying to do with the fellowship program is make sure that there are people from all three regions getting to the meetings mm -hmm. who wouldn't otherwise be able to as 
a way, as a stepping stone towards having there be more electable candidates to the AC and the board. Yeah, and the fellowship committee, the fellowship program is great. I've helped with that before. It's great. Yeah, no, I think just one of the easiest ways that we hope that we can get people on there through, you know, the current mechanisms is is get them here so people can get to know them, I think is what, mm -hmm. so, so hopefully that one's easy. Um, in terms of candidate speeches, we, we did look at that and um, have, have decided w there was some suggestions. Should we look at, um, should they be pre-taped? Um, should they be live? What and what restrictions should we put on that? And the view that we've generally come to on that specific one was that, you know, we do ask candidates to try and keep any speech focused on that. But w the feedback we kind of heard from many was let the, the electorate would like to decide. If somebody decides to get up and start talking about bananas for three minutes, then, then let the, commu the electorate decide how they want to deal with that. Um, we are, though, however, uh, as recently as just uh, this morning, discussing ways, though, that we can better get information to the membership, not only the people who are in this room, but also the wider community. But I don't have anything further on that for you because it's still in very early stages. And on the third one, the uh, term limit, uh, that seems to, that, I know that has cropped up many times. There was a fairly vivid discussion on Aaron Discuss, uh, I believe Aaron Discuss, was it Aaron mm -hmm. Discuss? I actually, I think it was cross-posted to be honest is why I'm getting a bit confused. Um, I think our view is that there does not seem to be consensus and I do not believe that we'll be taking, making any, there's no plans to make any changes in that regard in the near future, but you know, it is an area that has been revisited. Because so, concisely, my feedback is the governance committee should report back to the community once a year or so on some of these things when they're outstanding and let folks know what's going on. Like, that would be Yeah, nice. it, it's, it is a committee of the board, so it generally reports to the board, and the board should be reporting back. But I, I, I hear you, and I, I agree. There, as, Someone as, tell people out well, here. And it's also <laughs> I, I, well, I'll just I say, yeah, I, I agree. There was, there was a small mechanic issue, and I agree, especially when ACSP items are getting in there. We need right. to find a, a better way to get that back to you. So. I, I take the fall for two of those lack of report back because the board was concurrently discussing them while you submitted them mm -hmm. and I wanted the board discussion to finish. In some cases it only just finished. Okay. There was a third item though that you raised and I just want yes. board transparency. Yes. Okay. And so, so that's oh. current state is uh, meetings are announced in advance. Agendas to those meetings are posted in advance. Um, we've begun to post attachments for those meetings. The attachments that are that we can, sometimes we can't because they're privileged or confidential. Um, the board has been increasingly putting emphasis on making sure that you know their meeting and what they're talking about and what the materials are. And, and we've seen a lot of progress there. I hope to see more of that in the coming year. So that's all lovely. Thank mm -hmm. you for that. Um, however, in, when you read the board minutes, and I understand board minute, not just the Aaron board, but many boards minutes are kind of sum up what what happened They're it, like is, AC it minutes. is yeah well AC minutes actually are are very detailed and they say like you know Heather Schiller suggested this and you actually you can you can read the AC minutes and get a fair idea of you know what particular AC members response was to a given policy mm -hmm. it is extremely difficult to read through the board minutes and get any sense of what specific board member, where specific board members stand. And not everybody has the luxury of being able to grab individual board members and get information from them. And so when it comes time for elections, it's really hard to see like mm -hmm. what folks are doing and where people stand and like exactly what's going on. And so anything that could be done to increase transparency around that, and I would encourage anyone in the room who has, um, to speak to that as well. Okay. Yes, please. Thank you. Can I, can I respond to that? Oh, sure. So um, I, I certainly feel the same thing that you do very keenly, right? Um, okay. And I didn't hear this. I, I, I feel the same thing that you do very keenly, that okay. there is not a forum by which the board, members of the board, have a way of communicating to the community what it is they're up to, right? Once every three years, we get three minutes to say what it is that we think we've been up to, right? It, that doesn't feel to me like the best way to communicate 
what our positions are. Mm -hmm. And on, on the one hand, so, so there's a little bit of a conflict between giving sitting board members more opportunity to tell the community what they're up to and the desire to have the term limits and saying that sitting board members are already at a structural advantage in elections and so forth, right? At, as a sitting board member, I'd very, like to, very much like to have the podium some of the time to talk with you guys about the issues that I think are important and why. But at the same time, that's more of your time that I'd be chewing up with things that I think are important and don't know whether you guys think are important at the potential expense of the outreach of other candidates who might be trying for the seat that I'm sitting in. So to, I also want to be very clear. I'm not even actually talking about policy issues. So I'm, it's really all the other stuff that, you know, okay. like what is an individual board member's view about Aaron's, you know, financial plan or how money is going to, like, I, I know. And that, so like, that's the thing. Like you can see, you know, policy passed with a roll call vote and you have some sense of what happened there. But for everything else, it's like a black box and you don't know you don't know what's going on. Got it. Okay. Um, on the topic of board transparency, diversity, candidate speeches, board minutes, is that what you're on, Kevin? No. Okay. Is that what you're on, RS? No. No. Are you are you speaking on that topic? I am speaking on that. Please topic. do. I am uh, closing the mics for other topics. If you're going to, so after Kevin, if you have any other topic, get to the mic now. Uh, Rob Seastrom again. Um, I've had private conversations about the, uh, the way that putting stuff into the ACSP box sort of feels like it, it kind of disappears. Um, I'm going to avoid using inflammatory language here and just say there seems to be no SLA, and with no SLA, there's no SL. And we would, we would we, yeah, there's no S. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and I, 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 would, I would appreciate a commitment from the board to promptly dispose of, uh, communicate back on what, whatever goes into the ACSP box in a, in a quick manner. It's, it's the only way we have to communicate our desires on things that are not directly affectable by changes to the NRPM. Right. So I want to do, yeah, I want to do one quick thing. Some of that, again, is back to me because the ACSP was originally envisioned for um, suggestions about how Aaron operates. So it actually goes to me, and I, there, we actually, about, uh, we've, not mm -hmm. about 60% of the ASP, ASCs have been closed, particularly in the operational, can you change this field, can you do this, can you add this feature. Uh, we still have a development backlog because we're catching up on a lot of work, but we're making progress on them. The ones that go to the board, I guess, um, I bring to the board on agendas where there's time to put them and maybe either we need a different process or I need to be a higher rigor so you can know your matter's gone before the board. And that's something I've got to talk to the board about. Go ahead. Yeah, I, 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 can I, I, if I can reply to that briefly, okay. I, I don't expect instant gratification. I don't expect everything that goes into the ACSP to be prioritized at the higher level. I understand the operational constraints that you have. I, I do, however, like to hear back that, you know, like someone heard it and it's being taken under advisement and by the, by the way we probably won't get to it this quarter we're sorry got it so the only thing I wanted to add was just to take or tweak one of your comments or just because you said this is the only way we can let you know and I, I would agree it's the formal mechanism I guess and as John said there's probably some improvements but I would encourage that you know our email addresses are on the website we're in meetings you know if if there's informal thoughts that you have I know myself and I almost all the other trustees and John himself are always happy to hear those concerns if you want to do that. So please feel free to. I, I, and, and I, I, I think you, uh, I, I don't want to be sarcastic here, but I, I never do that. I never talk to board members or staff or anything like that. I, just, bring any I know you don't, but I was just, you, you, you made it sound like it was the only way. And I, think well, I, I, I understand that, and, uh, but it's, it, it is, you're, you're correct. It is the only formal way, but it's, it's the way that's well publicized and doesn't require one-on-one -on -one working relationships to people to come and say, hey, I need this, hey, I need that. Right. So the formality is a really good thing in a lot of ways. It gives transparency, it gives public feedback, everyone can see what the question was, what the answer was, and so forth. Um, I was going to make a suggestion. Uh, 
Maybe, maybe I should use this. Uh, uh, that, 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 that might be the wrong word. A, a, a possibility would be that suggestions that go in be explicitly directed to either the staff or the board. If they're been. directed to the staff, then John deals with them however he sees fit. If they're directed to the board, then it's not unreasonable, assuming that we don't get 10 of these a week, to expect a written response from every right. board member, right? That would be public, part of the public record. That, that would let you know where we stand, and it wouldn't be us grandstanding. I, I think that's a great idea, and it should be made explicit on the ACSP webpage if everybody in your team concurs. Okay, you can sit down Thank and work you. on that. Thank you. Okay, uh, Nate, I'm going to close it. I'm <laughs> closed. I was going to respond to something. Okay. Closed. <laughs> okay, Senator Rear. Very quickly, Kevin Bloomberg, The Wire and AC. Um, at the last Aaron meeting, you discussed uh, changes to the RSA, LRSA. Uh, can we get an update on that? Because it uh, does affect policy, I think. All right. So I actually held it, given everything we had in this meeting and what the board has already been working on. I held the engagement with the board on that topic. I'm going to resume it immediately after this meeting. So uh, I have a draft, and now it's a question of engaging with the legal and board to move that ahead. But literally, we didn't have enough cycles because of everything else going on. I could not get that and get that in front of you in a reasonable manner before this meeting. It just, we were too busy with other work. But it is top of the queue now. I appreciate the feedback. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, uh, queues are closed. Open mic session is completed. Um, I'd like